So my presentation, as you can see here, let's get into it because I've got a lot of slides to go. So my background is actually geology, not agricultural science, and I grew up on a dairy farm on the Tasman Peninsula. And one of the things my farmer, my brother, my father always talked about was that the soil was not good enough. And I was always intrigued by that. Then in 2015, I watched an irrigation panel on YouTube, and I became intrigued by the concept of soil constraints, and uh, the rest is history. So for my honours project, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to investigate the idea of soil constraints at a dairy farm at Tunbridge. So Tunbridge gets less than 500 millimetres per annum um, of rain, and by comparison, the circular head dairy region was about 1,100 millimetres of rain per annum. So this dairy farm is solely reliant on the Midlands Water Scheme for its survival and its six cent pivot irrigation systems produced past year all year round. By the way, there are approximately 3,000 to 4,000 centre pivots across Tasmania. So the centre pivot is used to irrigate the dairy pasture in a circle. Uh, the pivot of the study consisted of nine spans um, and a total of 50 metres with a total length of 450 metres. Uh, the centre pivot is divided into six grazing blocks and I chose one of those grazing blocks as the study area. So the last soil survey at Tunbridge was in 1961. I think it was actually done by a New Zealander. Um, due to the lack of up-to-date uh, soil data, I decided to treat this a greenfield site and employ a descriptive methodology instead of the traditional hypothesis driven approach. The advantage of a descriptive methodology is that it provides the flexibility to pursue the study key soil and irrigation phenomena. The disadvantage of the descriptive methodology is its increased potential for bias. However, the descriptive methodology also provides the foundation upon which hypothesis-driven research can be built upon. <coughs> so this is the land use history of the study area. Uh, Pugging is the action of cow's hooves sinking into the soil, if you don't know that, which can destroy pasture on wet soil. Uh, there was only a very small wet marshy area in the grazing block which channeled the water into a drain. Uh, the slopes and the hilltops were dry, so plugging was not an issue at this site, except what was found was very different from the original research question, and the descriptive methodology provided flexibility to zero in and follow up these key findings. So the methodology. So the project used the following methodology. And can you raise your hand if you can see any issues with this, this methodology? I can certainly can. So firstly, the methodology wasn't replicated. Secondly, the study area was not actually compared to a grazing block that had not been used by cows. And finally, the data was collected in April 2016, and there was no opportunity to collect data over multiple seasons. However, as an honest project, it's very limited in terms of time and funding, and uh, the risk of potential bias was accepted and, and accounted for. The irrigation methodology is to measure application proficiency, which is a measure of how well the centre pivot irrigator is performing. Runoff. Uh, there was no cheap way of collecting uh, in paddock runoff. So I had to design my own tool, which is now the part which I call the pasture runoff collector. I couldn't actually think of a better name, sorry about that. <laughs> if you've got a, better, got a better idea, please let me know. Uh, so this was designed locally by PFG Group. And uh, we also looked at IAR, which is the instantaneous application rate, which is the amount of water which is seen by the soil at one point of time. And IAR is a measure of potential runoff, which then can be compared to the actual collective runoff. So the soil methodology looked at hydraulic conductivity, which is the ease at which the water moves through the soil, the infiltration rate, which is the speed at which the water enters the soil, uh, Dietrace's studies, 
which are used to visualise how deep the irrigation water penetrated into the soil 24 hours after the irrigation event. And we also collected uh, soil samples for lab analysis. Here are the irrigation results, and I apologise for the, for the wall of numbers. So the distance from the centre pivot decreases by span. So span 2 is closest to the pivot centre, and span 8 is the furthest away from the pivot centre. The results show that impact runoff increased as we moved towards the outer spans. That's moving from span 2 out to span 8. The instantaneous application rate also increased as we moved outwards from the pivot centre. Uh, the spreaders, and you can see the little red arrow, um, um, what the spreaders do is they make the spray footprint larger. Uh, the spreaders make a significant difference in reducing impact runoff. And you see the red box. The red box shows the instantaneous application rate without the spreaders, which would have been likely increased the runoff actually beyond 40% on the outer spans. What concerns the infiltration rates, which is the second last column on the right. Uh, the infiltration rate of the sandy soil is somewhere between 20 to 250 millimetres an hour. So the soil in the study area is at the, is at the lower end. Hydraulic conduct conductivity is also low, with the range of uh, sandy soil being 15 to 50 millimetres. This is probably a better way of actually looking at the results of uh, runoff. And we can see with the blue line, we can see the importance of the spreaders in reducing potential runoff. We can also see that runoff on the outer spans is up to about 40%. Um, and this is, this is uh, in paddy runoff. Interesting question you may have noticed is where is slope in all this? And slope, what we found, had no impact on irrigation efficiency, except as a means to channel the runoff to the low line ground. Thank you. I think we're on track. Okay, so why all this runoff? The issue is due to compaction of the soil. Bulk density, I think I've gone a bit too far. There we go. Sorry about that. So all well, this runoff, so this is due to the compaction of the soil. Bulk density is an indicator of soil compaction and the high bulk density restricts the pasture regrowth. We can see with the bulk densities uh, in the study area of required time when we compare the red boxes to the green box, and the green box being the ideal state. Uh, readily available water is the amount of soil water available to plants, and this was low in the study area. The raw for a typical sandy soil is around 30%. Drainable porosity is the volume of the water that is removed and added as the table, water table changes in response to gravity. And this was also very low. So the drainable, poro drainable porosity for a typical sandy soil should be typically 18 to 39%. Okay, so this is a better way to look at all this compaction instead of tables is two, um, is used as the ditrace of photons, which allows to visualise the compaction over the length of the pivot irrigator. Notice these are plain view photos, so you're actually taking the photo, actually looking down um, on the actual soil. These photos were then converted into black and white images, and then the pix black pixels were then counted. As we can see, it's 62 metres, I've actually got the right slide. Yes, 62 metres from the pivot centre. Only 85% of the irrigation water penetrated the soil at ground level. <coughs> at 209 metres from the pivot centre, 56 wrong, 46% of the irrigation water penetrated to the ground level. <coughs> and at 411 metres from the pivot centre, less than 10% of the irrigation water penetrated at the ground level. So in summary, runoff increased as we moved outwards from the pivot centre and compaction also increased as we moved away from the pivot centre.
To explain this better, let's look at the pasture root zone, which is a typical depth of 30 centimetres. The ideal irrigation result is uniform coverage um, of the pasture root zone down to 30 centimetres. With compaction and crusting, so crusting is surface sealing, which leading to water repellents, and therefore with compaction and crusting, water cannot easily move through the soil, so the only top of the pasture root zone regularly receives irrigation water. With compaction and macrophore, macrophore flow, so macrophore, macrophore flow is preferential flow down cracks, animal burrows and around rocks, which means only part of the pasture root zone again regularly receives irrigation water. So it's highly likely that compaction, crusting and macrophore flow is the dominant means by which irrigation water is servicing the pasture root zone in the study area, which is not efficient. The interesting thing is, the actual centre pivot irrigator at the study area is actually very efficient. It's a very efficient irrigator. The issue I see is that the irrigation industry tells farmers that irrigation efficiency is about pumping rates, sprinklers and low operating costs. But if the irrigation water is actually not servicing the pasture root zone uniformly, then farmers are potentially wasting their water and their time and their money. Thank you. So this is the current situation here. So, and farmers have an ongoing pressing commitment to maintain the efficiency of their centre pivot irrigation systems. What I'm proposing is perhaps we can make this easier for our farmers by using low cost tools to see what actually is happening to their irrigation once the water hits the soil surface. Then optimising the pumping rates and sprinklers and operating costs to support uniform pasture growth. So I think diet tracer studies and runoff kits, which are cheap and can deliver engaging results quickly, can be used as part of the extension of farms. Uh, I think there's an opportunity to validate and fine tune the methodology on other dairy farms and build data sets for comparison. I also believe that we can use tools to complement research, for example, to assist in the development of automatic irrigation systems and improve environmental sustainability. <laughs> Thank you. Acknowledge Richard Gardner, Richard Doyle, Marcus Hardy, James Hill, Garth, Oliver, and Richard Lawson. There's a lot of Richards around in this school, I don't know why. <laughs> for support and also for keeping my sanity. <laughs> Very good. Questions? <clears throat> done, done question. Um, why, why, does, why is there more runoff further away from the span? Ah, um, well. It's because of the instantaneous application rate. So what happens is that uh, outer in, um, it's because the outer span has to move faster than in the inner span, so more water has to be dumped out there. And if the instantaneous application rate is actually more than what's the, um, what the infiltration rate of the soil, you get runoff. Okay, so the application of water is actually higher at the end of the span because it's moving faster. Right. It's, it's basically it. So, and the issue is, is that one pivots. Um, uh, we have very, very large pivots in Tasmania as well. So, yeah. Uh, yep. I'm a little unfamiliar with the spread of last technology. Uh, is that on any of the inner pivots, and does it get wider to help counteract that? No, it's only on pivots seven, eight, and nine. Okay. So, on in this particular case. Um, and so again, it's just to actually increase the spray area. So if you so if you have um, right in the inner, right in the, in the span close to the pivot centre, the spray is almost you might just have one sprinkler and it's a fine mist, so it's not much water coming out. By the time you get to the outer pivots, the water is belting out of the sprinklers, um, and so to stop that amount of water hitting the ground, you actually spread it out. Uh, Richard? Um, you've suggested a uh, changing of the area. There is, it was one thing to try and improve the infiltration rate of the soil. Like uh, We know this particular farmer, because mm. he's in a rather dry area, didn't mm. think that compaction was an issue, which I think Richard Warren did raise it. <laughs> yes, and I know Richard. From a wet part of the state. Yes. Could, could, could a, that be one mechanism as well? And the other one, perhaps, if we've got the wrong type of irrigation, we have lateral travellers rather than centre point travellers in the state. 
Yes, yes, laterals would actually resolve the issue. It was certainly one thing, and also soil movements might actually resolve the issue as well. Um, I'm, I'm more thinking about that we actually develop some ways for um, letting the farmers actually see the issue and then engaging them and then having an open discussion with that so we can, how we can improve the set of pivots which are already there in the start. Mm. Tony, with uh, <coughs> if, you, if you're going down the centre pivot road, um, mm -hmm. is there a, therefore a trade off between uh, efficiencies in terms of size of your pivot <coughs> versus what it's actually doing for you? There, uh, there potentially is. Um, so centre pivot technology was developed in America, in the Midwest, where they have, of course, massive plains and and beautiful soils. And here we are a lot different. So I think there's potential for a discussion for actually looking at doing a soil survey and perhaps choosing a pivot that's appropriate for the soil rather than the other way around. Any last questions? What was, the, what was the nozzle pack on that year ago? I think it was an 8 millimetre nozzle pack. It was... Oh, I forget which Nelson one it was. I can check my notes there afterwards. The application rate was 13 millimetres. That's what it was set to. Is that running into a lake? That's actually a lake. That's actually it. So you can go there and go duck shooting. <laughs> and I've just got the bit of running safely. No, 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 oh, no, so the it's 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 no, 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 it's actually right at the end. It looks like it's in that image. It, 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 it does, it does. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are a few extra lakes in the bedrooms of the home. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's quite picturesque there. <laughs> well, thank you, Tony.